Our final section of notes are going to cover the middle colonies and the southern colonies and a couple of big ideas for you to know about colo the colonial system here in North America. So um, the next four colonies are the middle colonies. The middle colonies include New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, and they are in the middle of the 13 colonies. Um, you should recognize all of these because we live in one of them and we're next door to the other three. So the middle, middle colonies were settled mainly for economic reasons. Economic means money and they were made, they were settled to make a profit. The land was very fertile so farming was very important. And in fact, it was called, these colonies were called the breadbasket of the colonies because of the huge amount of wheat and corn grown in the area. Now, none of these colonies could grow tobacco because the growing seasons were too short, but they were perfect for corn and wheat. And still today, much of New York and Pennsylvania is uh, used to grow corn, wheat, and other kinds of grains to supply food to our nation. Now, New York was originally settled by the Dutch and called the New Netherlands. But in 1664, the English took it over and renamed it New York. The King of England gave the colony to his brother, the Duke of York, and New Amsterdam, which was the capital of the New Netherlands down in New York City, was renamed New York City. So you need to know, to know the history of New York, which starts with settlement by the Dutch, and the Dutch settled New Amsterdam, which is New York City, and their northern um, outpost was Fort Orange, which is Albany. And then it was taken over in 1664 by the English. The next colony in the middle colonies is New Jersey. And the Duke of York, who owned New York, um, then gave land to other nobles south of New York. They created a colony and called it New Jersey. And um, typically that land was given away to keep people, keep nobles happy, keep them on your side. So New Jersey was just a little chunk of New York that was given away. And then Pennsylvania is an interesting colony because it was started by William Penn. He was given a charter by the King of England to create a colony for Quakers. And uh, Quakers are Christians who wanted to leave England, and they came to the New World looking for religious freedom. And we've hinted at this idea of somebody being rich enough to start their own colony, and that's called a proprietor. And Pennsylvania is the colony that, I've, that we've been hinting at that, that was started by a proprietor. So William Penn created Pennsylvania. It means Penn's Woods. And um, it was created for Quakers to have religious freedom. And finally, Delaware um, was named after Duke de la Loire. And it was created from a piece of Pennsylvania to... Uh, serve economic purposes, grow tobacco, or I mean, sorry, grow um, corn, wheat, and basically just be a resource, get the resources out of the land. Here's a picture of Fort Orange. The Dutch built a fort on the upper Hudson River to trade with Native Americans. That's what the Dutch were interested in, and they had farms up and down the Hudson River, but um, in 1664, they were pushed out, and the British came in and took over. So there's our small little town of city of Albany when it began. Um, the Dutch built a settlement at the mouth of the Hudson River. The mouth of the Hudson River is down near where New York City is today. And this was the capital of the Dutch city uh, and the Dutch colony. And now it is New York City. And this is lower Manhattan. Now the final five colonies that we need to learn about are the southern colonies. Those colonies include Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. And also be, be able to recognize these colonies on a map. The southern colonies were created for religious freedom and economic reasons. These colonies had very fertile soil that allowed them to grow crops almost year-round. This resulted in the growing of a variety of crops, but the most important were cash crops. And we know the cash crops so far, a couple of them. Um, we know tobacco, that's the crop that saved, saved Jamestown. And then cotton, cotton is gonna become 
cotton, so important to the southern economy that it's called king cotton. Uh, rice and indigo are the final two cash crops. And indigo, you probably have jeans on, and indigo is that blue color that is used to dye jeans and a lot of different clothing. So indigo is a plant that, cr that grows, and the berries are used to make a dye, the berries and the leaves, to make a dye. These crops required a very large number of farm workers. And just like the Jamestown settlers found when they when they started to grow tobacco, they found a high, great need for laborers. Well, this kicks off the whole slave and plantation system um, for the South. So uh, slaves were found to be a cheap source of labor. They were cheaper than indentured servants, and they didn't get to leave after a certain amount of time. So by the mid-1600s, slaves were being brought in from Africa, and southern the southern lifestyle of um, plantations and slaves to, and cash crops was being uh, set in stone. Now, plantations were these large farms that drew that grew mainly cash crops, and you can see the slaves doing the work. And we'll talk about slavery later on in the year when we approach the Civil War. Now, Virginia was a colony started in Jamestown in 1607 and it became successful because of tobacco. So we've covered Virginia and Jamestown as far as this unit goes. Maryland was created as a place for Roman Catholics to go to practice their religious freely, or their religion freely. Um, if you remember, in England, the only religion that was allowed was Anglican, or the Church of England. If you were anything else, you were persecuted and sent away. So Catholics were sent out of England um, all the separatists, the, the uh, pilgrims, the Puritans, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, all of them, they were all sent out, and Roman Catholics found freedom in Maryland. Then the Carolinas, North and South Carolina, they were created by English nobles to grow tobacco, indigo, and rice, obviously economic reasons. And Georgia was created by James Oglethorpe as a place for debtors to go and start a new life. And basically, the people that lived in Georgia were, were almost held like slaves, but to them, the colony of Georgia was better than a debtor's prison in England or a debtor's prison anywhere. So uh, Georgia was rough and uh, violent and very not a nice place to be back during the 16-1700s. Now, most colonists living in the American colonies were English. They came to the colonies in search of a better life. They wanted their own land. They wanted to practice their own religion, and they wanted to create a better life. Um, and when they came to the colonies, they brought the English culture with them, which included language, English customs, English traditions, English laws, English ideas about government. They were still English citizens. That's very important to remember. They thought of themselves as English. There was no idea that of this whole America thing until the mid-1700s. They believed they were English through and through. They just lived 3,000 miles away from their homeland and their king. But they still called the, their king their king. Um, so keep that in mind as we go into the next unit. All of these people that are colonizing and settling in the, in the colonies are English. And in all the colonies, in the, for the most part, they made their living by farming and by trading, and um, they relied on the crown, on the, on the king, to protect them from all the wiles of, the, of these new colonies, like Indians and the, and the great amount of land that's out there, the huge vastness. They relied on their king to keep them safe. By the 1700s, the American colonies were becoming extremely wealthy due to the natural resources found here and the manufactured goods being produced. While there weren't a lot of manufacturing centers, um, and in fact there were laws that prevented the colonies from manufacturing here, um, they still had a ton of wealth because of the natural resources. So take a look, there's um, furnitures made out of wood from the colonies. Uh, the lumber, the cotton, the iron were all sent back to England and sold in England. 
the lumber was used to make furniture, tools, weapons, and ships. All of, uh, wood was one of the most abundant resources here in the colonies, and it made the colonies very rich. And then the ability to grow these cash crops and seemingly limitless amount of land just made the colonies become extremely rich, much to the dismay of the English government. Now, this last section, this word that you need to understand is mercantilism. Once the colonies became extremely, started to become rich, they began to follow this policy of mercantilism. And this, the basic definition is a system of trade based on colonies and desire for wealth. But what it really means in practice is that the colonies would take their natural resources, they would supply them to the home country. So they'd send all these goods, or I mean all of these um, natural resources to the home country. Then the people that lived back in the home country would manufacture a product. Then that product would be sent back to the colonies. So in the end, money is only flowing out of the colonies. Money and goods flow out of the colonies. Money and natural resources, rather, flow out of the colonies. And then finished goods flow into the colonies. And when those finished goods are purchased in the colonies, that money flows back to the mother country. So the colonies are, the, the, the home nation, the mother nation, only sees the colonies as a resource for money. And for people living in England, they're happy about that. For people living in the colonies, they're going to start feeling oppressed. They're going to start feeling used. Okay. Um, and let's see there. England passes laws to control colonial trade. The Navigation Acts of 1660 uh, said to the colonies, colonies, you can only buy goods from England. Even if France and Spain's goods are cheaper, you can only buy goods from us. So the colonies see that as unfair. They want to um, buy goods wherever they can get them from. And that's going to lead to all kinds of problems and all kinds of, um, of solutions by the colonists to get the goods that they want. And it's going to start to strain relations between the colonies and Mother England.